Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Courtney. Today I have got 16 of my favorite Easter DIYs, so let's get into it. For this first project, I'm going to be crackling this wooden frame. So first I will take the glass and the backing out and set that aside. Then I'm going to take some truffle Waverly chalk paint and paint a coat on the frame. I'm going to use this heat gun to help speed up the process because I really am impatient when it comes to paint drying. And then I'll give it one more coat of the truffle chalk paint and then I'm going to set it aside so I can work on my insert. For the background on the inside of the frame, I'm using this scrapbook paper. I got this from one of those five season packs. I have a couple of them. Hobby Lobby usually puts out a new one every year. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the glass as my template to know what size I wanna cut this paper down. And then once I do that, I'm going to be taking some of these pom-poms that I purchased at Dollar Tree. There were headbands in the hair section. And I'm gonna cut them apart and use this to make a little garland to string up at the top of this frame. My frame is completely dried and here is our next step. So taking some regular old school glue, I'm just using this glue from Dollar Tree, it works totally fine. You're going to want to brush the entire frame with a nice coat of the glue. Now you do not want this glue to dry, you let it, I probably let it sit, I don't know, two or three minutes, but you want it to be pretty wet still when you go in with your lighter color. So the darker color goes first, then your glue, and then you go in very quickly and go ahead and paint the lighter color. For my lighter color, I will be using the Waverly Plaster because the scrapbook paper wasn't a pure white and I kind of wanted the frame to match that. I'm going to go in and give this one really thick coat and then as soon as I do that, you're going to want to get your heat gun ready to start getting it to crackle. Here comes the fun part. So taking your heat gun, you're going to turn it on. I put mine on the high heat setting and you're just going to move all the way around the frame. You can see as the little kind of dark brown is starting to come through, you just start moving it around. You do not want to hold it still in one place. You just want to continue to move that heat. And when I wasn't using my heat gun, I did just go ahead and click that stand down and I always just set it upright. But this is really, really fun to do. And I'm telling you, I had so much fun making this frame crackle up. The really nice thing about crackling your frame is because you're hitting it with the heat gun, the thing is completely dry when you're done making the crackle show through. So now I'm ready to put my scrapbook paper back in there and then I'm about to do a little bit of surgery on some styrofoam bunnies that I picked up from Dollar Tree. I got these little bunnies, they were actually picks. I just pulled the little dowel that was in it out and now I'm just taking my X-Acto knife and I'm cutting them in half. Yes, they do have glitter on them and yes, glitter is my nemesis, but these actually weren't that bad. Some of the glitter did fall off, but when I go to paint it, I actually like the fact that it has glitter on it. So I'm just gonna cut them in half very carefully. And then I'm gonna end up with three of these that I wanna turn into chocolate bunnies. For the second bunny, I went ahead and heated up the blade on my heat gun to see if that made a difference cutting the styrofoam, and boy did it. It just cut so easily. So there you go. You can heat up your blades to make cutting a little bit easier. Now, my three bunnies are finished. I did pull out their little eyeballs that they had because I didn't like them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and paint these bunnies with two coats of the Truffle Waverly chalk paint. And I'm going to kind of dab it on because it gives the bunny some texture like those chocolate bunnies that kind of have the little bit of hair that you can see, which I know sounds kind of weird, but um, it gives them more detail. So that's what I was saying about I like the fact that there's glitter on here because it gives these bunnies some really awesome texture. While 
while the bunnies are drying, I'm just gonna go ahead and secure down my pom-pom garland. Now, all I did to string this up was take a yarn needle and some twine, and I just fed it through all five of the little balls. And starting in the center, I'm just gonna take some hot glue and secure each of these little pom-poms down, and then I'll just trim off the extra twine at each of the ends. To give my bunnies a little bit more of a realistic look, I'm gonna take some of the Gloss Mod Podge and just paint one coat on each of the bunnies. I'm gonna let that dry, and then on the center bunny, I'm going to tie a little piece of twine into a bow. And then my final step will be to attach these bunnies to my sign just using some hot glue. For the next project, I will be working with some wooden spoons, but you certainly could pick up any wooden um, utensil that you'd like. I'm gonna paint each of the stems on these a different color. This one I'm gonna paint with the Ballet Slipper Pink Waverly Chalk Paint, and I started to paint here and then I realized, oh shoot, I forgot to put my washi tape down so that I could get a crisp line where I wanted this to start. So here I am taking my washi tape and setting it around the stem so I know exactly where to start. And then I'm going for the yellow spoon. I wanted to do stripes. So again, using some washi tape, I will just wrap it and paint it. And then the last spoon will be a blue handle, just like the pink one at the same height. Again, using some washi tape so I can get that nice crisp line. Once they're all painted, go ahead and pull off the washi tape and you should end up with some really nice clean lines and some very pretty colored handles. Now we are ready to work with our printable. So I just made this up on the computer and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the bunny. I'm gonna trim around it so I can get it kind of small enough because I will be tracing the outline of this image onto the top of one of my spoons. I'm just gonna take a pencil and go the old school way of getting this transferred. So just scratch the back of the bunny and get it all covered. And then um, when I lifted the bunny up, I thought this was hilarious that it transferred through onto the paper underneath it. And here I am just zooming in to show you that I thought that was really funny. I don't know y'all, simple pleasures. I mean, what can I say? And then once I've got that done, I'm gonna put the template of my bunny down onto the top of the spoon and then just take my pencil and lightly outline around the bunny. Now I'm going to take my scorch marker and just outline this bunny and then go ahead and fill it in. This is a chemical that will allow the heat gun to burn just in this area. And I'll be using, again, the Wagner heat gun. It is the HT400 if you are wondering what model it is. And so I'm just going to do the same technique where I do not hold the gun in one place. I'm just gonna move it around. I start on low heat just to kind of set it and then I do end up turning it up to the high heat and you can burn it as dark as you want. I mean, the longer you have the gun on it, the darker it will get. For the other two spoons, I'm gonna go through the exact same process. I'm going to trace the word hip on one and hop on the other. Then I will trace those words with my scorch marker and then again, hit it with my heat gun.
For this easy DIY, I'll be using some scrap wood that I had left over from a project, so it does have a little bit of stain on it, but I am gonna go in and paint it with some of this Annie Sloan chalk paint. These um, boards, or these boards, are two by sixes that I cut down to six by six. I'm just gonna go in with one coat of the Annie Sloan paint, and while that's drying, I did wanna quickly show you how you can make a Dollar Tree stencil if you do not have a Cricut. So all you'll need to pick up is some contact paper from Dollar Tree so that's what this brown is I have this little foam bunny also from Dollar Tree I'm going to trace around it onto the contact paper and then cut it out and then voila I have my own stencil once that stencil is done you can treat it like any other stencil and then um, I'm gonna go ahead and place my stencils on top of my blocks for one of the bunnies, I'm going to paint it with some of the chopped Serenity Blue chalk paint. And then for the other two, I will use the Waverly Silver Lining chalk paint. Then once that's all dry, I'll give it a light sanding, add some twine bows, and then this easy project is finished. The next DIY will be using one of these tinsel baskets from Dollar Tree. I'm going to take the eggs out and go ahead and set those aside because I will need those again. I'm going to take all the tinsel off of it and then I'm going to be ready to go ahead and cover it. Now I'm using this, I'm calling it raffia filler. It was at Hobby Lobby in the gift section. I think it's to fill baskets and things like that. But I'm just using hot glue and I'm literally just applying it, applying it, applying it and look what it looks like. That's what happens when it's completely covered and now you get to uh, you know what it is take your inner Mr. Miyagi and do some trimming to kind of find your basket again um, then that was finished now I'm just gonna take my eggs and wrap them in some fabric the easiest way I found to do this was just to figure out how big I needed to make the fabric I'm just going to wrap the fabric around the egg and pull all the fabric down towards the bottom and then I'll tie off the bottom so that the fabric stays nice and tight against the egg. Then once that's done, I'm going to take my eggs and stick them inside of my basket. And the final touch to this little basket will be to add some Dollar Tree lace around the rim of the basket and then a good old twine bow. This next DIY is another easy one. I found this template on Pinterest. I will link it down below for you. And what we are gonna be doing are making little mini lamps with Dollar Tree supplies. So I have this glass candle holder from Dollar Tree. And yes, I was trying to struggle with the label, but then I was like, what's the point? Um, this pack is one of those season packs from Hobby Lobby that I've talked about. I went through and tried to figure out what kind of springtime um, shades I wanted to make. Then I took my template and I traced it onto the back of the scrapbook paper. Once I got that traced out, I cut out my two shades and then I just used some double sided tape to close them together. And then for the light, all I'm using is one of the little um, flameless votive candles from Dollar Tree, little battery operated ones to put in my little candlestick. And then the lampshade will go nicely on top. To finish them off, I went ahead and wrapped one of them with twine and added some carrots. The other one I wrapped with some nautical rope and added a little pull tag as well as some Dollar Tree lace to the shades. And there you go, two little mini lamps that you could change out the shades for every season. For this DIY, you'll be using a clay pot. I'm using some Annie Sloan old white chalk paint and just brushing it on the pot to get the look that I want. Once I get that look done, I'm going to take this Easter sign and pop off the little bunny. And then I'm also going to go ahead and save that little burlap bow because I will be reapplying it to my bunny. Taking some batting and some hot glue, I'm going to attach batting to my bunny and get it just kind of a puffy, more 3D, fluffy look. 
This is the fabric that I chose. I just cut a square because I'm only going to cover the front of the bunny and I just hot glued it down and then I'll just trim around the bunny. Once the bunny is trimmed, I'm going to go ahead and reattach my little burlap bow here and then take a little bit of the batting and make a fluffy little cottontail and attach that to the bunny with some hot glue. Then taking this foam, I'm going to stick it in my pot and I'm going to attach a Dollar Tree dowel rod to the back of the bunny so that I can get it into the pot. Once the bunny um, is ready to go in there, I'm first going to go ahead and put some floral moss in there and then go ahead and jab my bunny in there. And once the bunny is in there, I'm just going to add two of these little Dollar Tree carrots to kind of give it a little something extra. And then voila, I think I say that every time, but there you go, another little easy Dollar Tree Spring DIY. For the next DIY, I will be using this sign that was back from Valentine's Day, but Dollar Tree does have one that says love, fine, I can't remember what else it says, but it has the pink rose on it. So you're going to want to just pop that off. I'm going to give this a coat of paint with the Waverly White chalk paint on this bless heart where the arrow is, cover that up along with the sides. After it's dry, I'm going to take my ruler and measure the inside of the box. I'm going to go ahead and add about an eighth of an inch to each of the side measurements. Then I will take those measurements and go ahead and cut a piece of foam board. This is just Dollar Tree foam board with my X-Acto knife. Then using this little glittery turquoise bunny that came from Dollar Tree, I'm using it as a template, but you certainly could go on Pinterest and print out whatever template you might need. I'm going to trace around it onto the foam board and then cut that out with my X-Acto knife. Then taking the Waverly White chalk paint, I'm also going to go ahead and paint the edges of the back of the sign along with just a little bit down into it. The back's going to be covered with scrapbook paper. You're not going to see a lot of the other edges. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. So really, you'd only need to paint maybe just the edges of the back. Then I'm going to take my Cricut spatula because I wanted something that had a rounded edge and I marked off some measurements on the little foam bunny cutout. I wanted to have it look kind of like wood so I'm using this rounded edge because if I used my X-Acto knife it would cut the foam board and that is not the look I wanted. I wanted it to have more of a shiplap feel if you know what I'm saying with the gap not like a slit. I hope that makes sense. Once I got my lines on there, this is what it looked like. And then I do go back in and add some little vertical lines to make it look like it's pieces of wood and have that more faux shiplack feel. I'm gonna take some of my Gorilla Glue adhesive spray and go ahead and spray the back of the box. And then this is just some scrap of paper from that Five Seasons pack that I always pull from. Once that's done, I'm just going to lightly push my little foam cutout in. Now, I wish I'd had some fairy lights. Originally, I thought I did, and I was going to light up the inside of this box, but I could not find my fairy lights. Well, actually, I know where my fairy lights are. They're in my uh, Christmas closet, and if I go in there, I'm never coming out. So, anyway, if you have some lights, you certainly could put them in and then set your little foam insert in. Up to you. And then I wanted to finish it off with some things, so I went ahead and tied um, some twine around the top and the bottom. And then look at that, I found some greenery and some flowers in a little box in the back of one of my cabinets. So I went ahead and added this little pink rose along with some eucalyptus that I had. And then voila, here is my little box all finished. It's garland making time. So I have these two rabbits left over from a Target garland that I got. And what I'm doing is putting down some Allen's tacky glue and then I'm going to stick them on top of this piece of gray felt that I have. Once they are down, I'm just gonna go ahead and trim around the bunnies so that I end up with four different bunnies. Now I'm ready to embellish my bunnies. So two of them will have twine bows and then two of them will have these little bushy tails. I also had some purple flowers that I wanted to work in here from Dollar Tree as well. 
Then I was ready to go ahead and decide what I wanted to hang all of my things on and I didn't want to use twine or rope so I decided to use raffia. So I took three pieces of raffia and tied a knot at one end, taped it to my table and then just did a really long braid. Um, I had to work in a couple different sections. I mean three pieces of raffia is not long enough so you will have to tie in some other pieces but it went really easily. Then I wanted to also make some tassels so that I could hang those in the mix. And then um, here is my pattern. It's bunny, carrot, tassel, carrot, bunny. And then to get these tied up, I just tied in my um, graffia tassels. That was the easiest way to get those attached. The carrots I just hot glued and the bunnies I hot glued as well. Just remember when you glue the bunnies that you don't glue it in the middle of the bunny. You want to do it more towards the top because if you do it in the middle, your garland will kind of fall forward. That what's, that's what makes it fall forward. So just remember you do want to make sure you place those in the right place. And to make the tassels, all you have to do is just take several pieces of raffia, fold it in half, and then wrap a little bit of raffia around it. And that is all I did to get those made. This garland is even easier than the last garland. So for it, I'm using some Dollar Tree headbands as well as these bunny treat bags. And I'm taking the bags and the little white tags on the inside of the bags, you could kind of see through. So I am ripping those out. Once that's done, I'm flipping it over and then taking these little bunnies that I pulled off from the headphones, or I'm sorry, headbands, and I'm gluing them directly on to the treat. Now I'm not gluing them to the top. I'm making sure to leave a little bit of space on the top because to attach it to my rope, I am going to fold it over just to kind of make it have a cleaner look um, and look like they're more attached to the rope. And then I'm just going to have a pattern, purple, blue, pink, purple, blue, pink. And that's it guys. This one is finished. So taking one of the little mini plastic craft jars from Dollar Tree, I'm gonna start by painting the lid of the craft jar with this ivory Waverly chalk paint. Once that's done, I have one of these little ceramic animals. I grab the bunny, they also have ducks and some other, an egg and things like that. I'm gonna paint it with some of the Waverly Ballet Slipper chalk paint. Then I will just attach it to the top of the lid just using some of the Gorilla Glue so that it sets up nicely. And then I'm going to fill the jar with some colorful uh, spring colored Rolos. And then I will end up tying some raffia around my jar in a bow. And I did add, go ahead and add a pom pom to the bunny just to make it a little bit cuter with the bushy tail. Now, when you make these, something you could do is do this craft with your kids if you do have kids. And you could text your neighbors if you go out for a walk and let them know you're dropping off some little treat on their steps to bring them a little bit of cheer. This DIY I'll be making a reverse canvas using one of these 16 by 20 canvases from Hobby Lobby. I got it in a value pack. The first step I'm taking is to go ahead and remove these staples from the back. This is optional, but I will be using a screwdriver and my pliers to get those staples out. If you choose not to take the staples, just take a box cutter or an X-Acto knife and just trim on the outside of the staples. I just wanted to do this because when I go to reattach the canvas, I wanted to make sure I had enough and I wasn't getting too close to my fingers when I stapled it back down. Once the staples are out, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the canvas part and set that aside. And now I'm gonna prep my frame. So when I do reverse canvas projects, I do not like these little openings in the corners. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in and fill it with some wood filler that's paintable and stainable. So make sure if you do that, that you get one that you can stain or paint. I do not worry about the openings on the edges on the outside of the frame because they are not that noticeable. But for the inside, I'm definitely gonna get those filled up. 
You may also be wondering at this point why in the world I am doing the wood filler like this. Well, as much as I'd like to say it's some awesome technique, it's not. My wood filler was almost out and I was struggling to get it out of the tube, so this is just how I did it. And honestly, every now and then, I like to get my hands dirty, so this was kind of fun. While the wood filler is setting up, I'm gonna start working on my fabric bunnies. So these four things of fabric, you guys have been seeing me using them. The other day I was at Hobby Lobby and they have all of these in stock. Um, so you should be able to find them. It's in the regular fabric wall um, that they have there where it's kind of color coded. That's where they are, at least at my Hobby Lobby. So I'm taking one of these foam bunnies from Dollar Tree and using that as my template. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut four squares of the fabric. And then I'm gonna trace the bunny onto the fabric on the back side of each square using a pencil and then I will cut them out. My bunnies are cut out, so now I'm going to take a sanding block and I'm just going to lightly go over where the wood filler was and sand it off. Then I'll wipe the frame down real good, make sure there's nothing left. And then I'm ready to go ahead and stain my frame. Now I didn't want to use an actual stain and I didn't want to paint it, so what I'll be using is this brown cream wax from Hobby Lobby. I have had this jar of wax for forever I'm not even kidding literally forever <laughs> so I'm just gonna give it a nice light coat and it puts the perfect tint that I want on my frame all right, now I'm gonna work on my embellishments for my frame and I've decided I wanna add some felt flowers to my frame. I just love the felt flowers. I feel like it's a nice break from florals and it's just something a little different. I did just do a, a very more in-depth tutorial about how to make these, so I will link that video down below if you wanna see, but I'll try to briefly explain it <laughs> right now. So for this one, you're gonna cut a circle um, out of felt, then take a pair of scissors and just snip the center like that. Then taking a pair of scissors, I'm using my Curve Blade Fiskers. These are game changer when you're working with felt. I will link some down below. You're just going to start going in a spiral, cutting little scallops basically until you get all the way to the edge of the circle. Now taking the end where you finish, the opposite end of where you started, you're just going to start twirling it around like this until you get it wrapped all the way around. And then once you do that, I'm gonna secure the base with some hot glue and kind of just tack some of the little petals down. And then for the embellishment in the center, I'm gonna end up putting in one of these pearls. I got these from Dollar Tree and I think it just adds the perfect little finishing touch. Using some stiff green felt, I just freehanded some leaves using my pinking shears. Now it's time to start assembling this project. So I'm going to start by putting my canvas back on to the frame, having the white side be the back. I'm going to start by kind of attaching the top with my staple gun and then I like to do opposite. So I'll pull it and do the bottom, then I'll go left, right, and then I'll fill it all in with a bunch of staples. The back's on, so now I'm just gonna take a pair of scissors and trim around the edge. You certainly could use um, an X-Acto knife if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna zip across, do that. And then my bunnies were a little bit wrinkled, so I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly spray them with some of this Grove Collaborative Wrinkle Spray. I've been getting a lot of questions about it. It works really well. Um, I just, I'm not a big fan of an iron. Like I just, I don't use an iron. That's what my dryer's for. So um, this Wrinkle Spray is a lifesaver for me. I have used the downy one in the past. The one I'm using right now is by Grove Collaborative, um, but the one that uh, I use from Downy, I'll try to link it down below if I can find it. It works really well also. Then once the bunnies are pressed, I'm gonna let them dry. And then I'll be ready to start attaching my flowers to my frame. To attach these, I am gonna just be using some hot glue. Now, the yellow rose right there that I'm putting down right now, um, I thought I was recording how I did that and I did not. It's super easy. So to make that flower, you're again, you're gonna start with a circle piece of felt and then you're gonna start on the outside of the circle and just cut a spiral working your way all the way into the, 
the middle and then start on that end and just roll it into itself just like you did with the pink one. So that one is super easy to do. Again, I will link down the tutorial that I did on those if you want a little more detailed information. Once these are down, I'm gonna start working on the little garland that I wanna to attach to my frame. For my little garland, I will be using wooden beads and buttons. So these beads, I always buy all my beads on Amazon. I will link them down below. And I have four different colored buttons that all coordinate with the fabric I'm using. This pastel pack of buttons came from Hobby Lobby quite a while ago. So my pattern is just three beads, a button, three beads, a button. And I'm gonna end up using a total of eight buttons. Now I'm making some wonky looking tassels. Uh, the reason I'm doing them this way is because I wanted them to be kind of flat so that more surface area of the button will actually attach to the tassel versus if I did it the regular way, it would have been very bulky and lumpy and I didn't want that. So that's why I'm doing it, but these will just be hot glued to the back of my buttons. I'm just attaching my tassels with some hot glue and then I will hot glue my garland down to my canvas. I got my garland attached and the tassels attached to the buttons. Now I'm getting my bunnies ready. I'm going to be using some of the Gorilla Glue spray adhesive. I love this stuff. And guys, this is actually, it's a repositional one. I wanted to show you that. So when you put it down, you can actually peel it up, stick it back down and it works great. The last step is to attach the little tails to the bunnies. I went back and forth on what I wanted to use for this, whether it was gonna be a pom-pom, but I don't know, these beads were calling to me. They're flat on one end. I got these from Hobby Lobby and I'm just gonna hot glue them onto there and this project is finished. I am seeing fabric bunnies everywhere and I knew I wanted to make some. So I found this printable on Pinterest. I will link it down below for you if you would like to use this one. I'm gonna cut it out. Once it's cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and pin it to a folded over piece of fabric. This fabric came in a six pack of fat quarters from Walmart. It's actually a flannel material, which is really nice for this type of project. So the material's not super thin. Once I have pinned the bunny down and I'm ready to start cutting, I originally did cut about a half an inch allowance around the template. Why I did that, I don't know. It was an extra step that didn't need to be done. So really what you need to do is pin your bunny down and then if you have pinking shears, which is what I'm using, just take the pinking shears and go around the edge and just cut it like this and there you go. You don't have to have that extra step of leaving an allowance. I don't feel like that's even necessary. Here's my bunny all cut out. And now starting at the top, I am just gonna be using regular hot glue to close this. Now I'm using my detail tip again because I can put just a small amount of glue and because this is flannel, this glue actually sticks to it really well and I immediately press it down so there are no bumpy, lumpy, 3D, you can tell I glued it type look. As you can see, I'm kind of pressing it as I go. So I'm just gonna work my way down the bunny in little sections here, closing off. Like you can see right there, very small amount of glue needed um, until I get to the very bottom and then I'll be ready to stuff it. Now, before we get to the filling of this bunny, I did want to just quickly say that Lucky, the cereal dog toy killer, has not struck in a couple days, so I didn't have batting for this. You'll notice the little styrofoam balls on the screen right here to the left. I'm just gonna put some clips of the real audio so you guys know what the struggle was with those. No, 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 oh my gosh, no, 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 oh. Okay, I'm sorry, but these are, oh no, they're everywhere. These are the worst craft supply ever invented because, oh no, 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 what the, no, oh, come on. Oh dear, this is like the worst ever plan, I think. Okay, maybe not the worst plan I've ever had. Why, 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 why? 
do not recommend this activity. Should have just shoved the ding dong bag in there. Once the little styrofoam balls were inside the bunny, which was a task in itself, I took a piece of twine and tied it around its neck, tied a little bow. But here is a hack that I realized for the second bunny I made. If you take the package from Dollar Tree, assuming it's not opened yet, just snip the bottom corner of the package and you can literally just squeeze them out that way. It, it worked beautifully for the second bunny. I didn't film it but save yourself a headache and do it that way. But these little styrofoam balls actually are great fillers. They're just a pain to work with. This next DIY is another super easy one. So I picked up this wooden rolling pin from Goodwill for 50 cents. I'm gonna be using some Waverly Ballet Slipper paint. And what I'm gonna do is take some painter's tape and I'm gonna tape off some stripes on this rolling pin. Then I'm gonna go in with my paintbrush and paint one coat of the Ballet Slipper paint and then peel it off. Now that the stripes are all painted, I'm gonna go ahead and take the same ballet slipper paint and paint the handles of the rolling pin. The last step in this DIY is going to be taking this printable that I made and I will include a link to it down in the description box for some carrot cake, Nana's carrot cake to be specific and a carrot from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to trace around this carrot. Now, I would recommend flipping your printable over to the back if you can figure out where you want it, or if you do it this way, you might need to erase pencil marks. So I just wanted to say that, go ahead and trace it where you want it, whether it's on the ingredients list, the recipe part, wherever you want to print it out, there's lots of text. Once you trace around it, you're simply going to trim it out then I'm going to take some Gorilla Adhesive Spray and I'm simply going to spray my carrot, attach it on there. And then for a final touch, I'm going to take two colored pencils. One is a green and one is an orange. And I'm going to kind of go around the edge of the carrot where the greenery is supposed to go in green and then the carrot part in orange. And then lightly shade it in. I don't want a, it to be super orange and green. I just kind of want a light hint of color. And then to finish it off, all I did was tie my little carrot cake recipe to my rolling pin with a piece of twine. For this DIY, I'm gonna be using one of these bunnies from Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna save the little inserts of the ears for later. I'm just gonna go ahead and take off all this tinsel and once the tinsel's off, I'm gonna go in and use my Fiskars curved belayed scissors to trim off all the little knobbies on there. And then I'm gonna break the bunny apart so I end up with only the part of this bunny that has the head and the ears. display sign is drying, I'm going to start working on the bunny head. So taking some hot glue, I'm just going to put down some glue on the bunny head and I'm going to add some batting stuffing, whatever you want to call it. Normally I just keep old pillows and use that, but I was out. Luckily my terrier had just destroyed one of my labs babies is what we call them but they're her little stuffed animals so that is why you might see a few rogue black hairs in there because those are my labs so yes thank you to my dog lucky for destroying a toy so that i could have batting i guess he likes to craft as well so what i'm doing is just putting kind of a thin layer on the top of this and then that way when i go to attach it to my display it won't be all flat and just wonky looking going 
to trim up a piece of fabric. This fabric I got last spring from Hobby Lobby and I'm continuing to use it, but I'm just cutting kind of a big square of it so that I can make sure I have enough to wrap around my bunny. And then once I trim this, I realized this fabric is super wrinkly and I'm just gonna be honest, I was too lazy and didn't wanna get out my little iron. So I just used some wrinkle spray. It works great. I keep it in my craft room for things like this. And so I'm just gonna spray it on there, flatten this piece of fabric out, and then I'm just gonna begin wrapping it around my bunny. Now that my bunny's all wrapped, I wanna work on the insides of the ears. So originally I took some of this white fabric and what I did is I just folded over a piece of the fabric and used the pink little stencil, not stencil, but the inside of the bunny that I told you guys to set aside as my template and I trimmed it. Well, I didn't really like the white on the bunny. So now I decided to do the same thing, but now I have burlap for the inside of the ears. To attach the burlap inside of the ears, I'm just using some Allen's tacky glue and I'm just going to smush it on there, kind of spread it out with my finger and put it down. I don't like it because it dries clear. Then once that's done, I'm going to take some raffia and I'm going to tie it in a knot in the middle and kind of shred it up. And these are gonna become whiskers. And then I'm gonna use a button for a nose. And I'm just going to hot glue this down onto my bunny. Side note, I quickly wanted to say, I originally had a different button that only had two holes. And I kept setting it down and thinking, this looks so weird. And the reason why is it looked like a pig snout. So pay attention to your button because if you use a two hold button, it might look like a bunny pig. My sign is ready. There's my bunny head. So now I'm gonna take some hot glue and I'm gonna put a ton of it on the back of this bunny. And then I'm going to smush this bunny down on top of my sign. Now, right here, you're gonna notice that, yes, I did paint it the French blue, like I mentioned. But when you see me pan through this in a minute, you're gonna notice that sign changed colors and I decided to paint it white. But like I said, the bunny's gonna go down and then to add one finishing touch, I'm gonna tie a little raffia bow to put on the knob on the top. DIY, I will be working with this sign from Dollar Tree. I'm going to break it down by taking off the twine. Once that's done, I'm going to take some Waverly White chalk paint and I'm going to just paint the front of the sign with one coat of the paint. Then I'm going to take some large popsicle sticks that I've had. I believe I got these from Walmart. And what I decided I wanted to do was to make a faux shiplap wall on top of this sign. And so I'm cutting and kind of making a pattern, but not really making a pattern and cutting them down. And then before I glued them down, I grabbed a wooden bunny that I've had sitting on my counter for forever and decided I needed to use it. <laughs> and I set it on top. And then after I put the bunny on top, there were a couple places where I felt like I needed some more, I guess, cuts in the faux wood. And so I went ahead and marked it with the pencil and then cut them down. And then once that was done, I was ready to glue these down straight to the board with hot glue. And then I'm just going to take the Waverly White chalk paint again and paint over all of my popsicle sticks.
Before I tell you how I did my bunny, please draw your eyes to the top left corner. You're going to notice that my sign is now gray. Um, I totally changed my plan. I originally I was going with the pastel theme and that's why I did the white where the white was going to be the distress part coming through, but I changed my mind. So I painted over it with the steel um, color Waverly chalk paint and that's where it's at now. Now as far as the bunny goes, I'm just taking this piece of fabric that I got in a pack from Walmart quite a while ago and I put my bunny on the back of it. I'm tracing around it with a fabric marker, then I'll cut the bunny out. Once the bunny's cut out, I'm going to go ahead and use my Arteza paint marker and go around the edge of the bunny as well as get the wrinkles out of my bunny by using some wrinkle spray because I don't want to pull out my iron. And then from there, I'm ready to attach my fabric to the bunny and I'm just going to use my Gorilla Glue Repositional Adhesive Spray to get it attached to the bunny and then the bunny is all finished. Moving on to distressing my sign. So you guys know this technique, I taught it to you. If you did not see that video, I will link it down below. Taking a votive candle, I'm just gonna rub it all over my sign. Once that's done, I'm going to take some plaster Waverly chalk paint and paint over the entire sign. I'm gonna let it dry a little bit, get it kind of tacky, close to dry, but not dry. And then I'm just gonna take a scraper and I'm gonna start scraping it everywhere to get that chipped distressed look and then once that's done I am ready to start putting my sign together. I have this bunny sign left over from the three pack that Dollar Tree had. So I'm gonna take some of this galvanized tin paint and I'm just gonna paint over it to kind of take some of the shine off. And then once that's done, I'm going to take a piece of this white leftover fence from a previous DIY I did. And I'm gonna hot glue that down to my sign. Then on top of the fence, I'm going to hot glue down my bunny. Once that's done, I'm going to grab two of the Dollar Tree carrots that I had laying around, as well as the bunny sign, and I'm gonna glue those down, as well as attach a bow um, made out of twine to the center of the bunny's neck. For the next DIY, I really wanted to do something totally different. So I found this little bunny at Goodwill for 99 cents and I took off the sticker and took off the little felt flower. And originally I had thought, okay, I'll put some fabric on it. Well, that seems to be my go-to and I just wanted to do something different. So I had these turquoise colored rocks or pebbles from Dollar Tree and I thought, you know what? This is totally different. So all I did to attach these was put down some hot glue smush the rock down and then I just continued to do that until I got it covered and when it was finished um, honestly it kind of reminded me of breakfast at Tiffany's the Tiffany blue and turquoise so it really is springy and just gives this rabbit some different kind of texture and I really like it very much and so then all I did to finish it off was to add a piece of twine seriously the easiest little updo you could do to a wooden rabbit and I'm absolutely loving it And there you go, 16 Easter DIYs that I hope will inspire you to start creating some of your own spring and Easter projects. Let me know down below which one of these was your favorite. Here is just a little recap of all the projects in today's video. At the end, I've got some more videos that you might like. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next one. Bye!